Hi guys, it's Tim with Tim Boyer Photography. Welcome to this week's tutorial. This tutorial answers a question that I got from a viewer and he wanted to know how I decide how I'm going to shoot. Do I just walk around and see if I can find a bird and photograph it? Or do I have a target bird and how do I approach it if I have a target bird? What do I do? There's a couple of different styles here. So you can walk around, uh, you can grab a lens, a, a 100 to 400 millimeter lens and walk around at a local pond or on a boardwalk at a local marsh or something and you can get some good shots that way. It's a let's go out and see what happens kind of an event and that works really great if you just want to get outside for the day if uh, the photography session is a little bit more social and you're going with some friends the walk around kind of approach works really well or if you've got time to just kind of wander around or you're trying to mix your photography with exercise the walk around see what you can see kind of approach works and I do this all the time I kind of refer to it as location based photography where I'm gonna to go to a location and I'll know that I'm gonna see different birds every day now that's different than having a target bird. And sometimes if I wanna shoot shorebirds, well, I know I'm gonna go out to the Washington coast. I'm, I photograph a lot of shorebirds on the Washington coast. I know exactly where to go, what time of day to be there. So that's a very specific, if I'm going to a specific target bird or species of bird, I'll go to a certain location where I know they're gonna be. Now, if it's the first time I photograph those birds, I'm going to do a lot of research ahead of time. So I'm gonna find out what their migratory routes are, where they congregate. I'm gonna to try to find a location where there's a lot of these birds. So that gives me more photographic opportunities. I don't wanna to go to a place where there's just one bird because if there's just one bird, I have one chance, right? If that bird decides to leave or maybe it flies south or north before I get there, then I'm kind of out of luck. But if I can find out when the birds migrate through and there's a congregation of birds, then I just get better chances. Now, an example of this is Bosque del Apache in the wintertime. I just got back from there a couple of weeks ago. Now, I knew that the sandhill cranes and the snow geese winter there. And so those were my target species by going to that location. I also knew that if I drove around on the auto tour route, I could get other species of birds. I got roadrunner, kestrel, red-tailed hawks, and a bunch of other things. And that was all because I knew that they would be there. And both techniques worked, kind of the drive around or walk around approach and then the specific target bird approach. So in that kind of a situation, both of them work. You can do the walk around approach by walking around a pond or driving around an auto tour route. You can do the target bird one by setting up a bird feeder in your backyard and you're targeting the birds in your backyard, the different species that might show up there. You can do a target bird by using your car as a blind at a National Wildlife Refuge and, and really specifically knowing you wanna go get a roadrunner shot or a kestrel shot, you can do that. So really, I decide how I'm going to approach photography by what bird I wanna go see or some other factors. Am I after a single bird? Do I really wanna get a photograph of a bird that I've never photographed before? So let's say I go to a new location and I, let's say I'm gonna to go to Florida, which is a opposite end of the country from me, right? If I wanna to go to Florida, I wanna target roseate spoonbills, I need to find out when they're in breeding plumage, what the best month to go is, I'll find out what the best locations are, and then I'll go there and I'll photograph roseate spoonbills. So I'll plan my trip kind of around that. Probably it's going to be in the springtime or something like that when there's lots of other birds and all the birds are getting into their breeding plumage color down there. So how I decide what I'm gonna photograph really depends on the purpose of the trip. Is the purpose to target a single bird? Is the purpose social? Is the purpose to walk around and get out of the house because I've spent too much time in front of the computer? So my purpose drives a lot of what I do. Today I'm gonna to walk down to the local park because I wanna see what I can find down there. I know that the, some winter birds are coming in. I don't know which ones. So it's kind of a walk around, see what there is kind of thing. Later this month, I'm gonna to go to, for a specific bird. I'm gonna to go to the Waterfill Plateau in Eastern Washington, um, about a three hour drive from here. And I'm gonna target some birds that are there only in the winter time. And so I'll research where they are, what roads they're on. I'll drive on those roads and I'll find those birds. So a lot of it is purpose driven. What do I want to do that day? And which technique works the best for me? Hey, if you enjoy what I'm doing on my channel, give me a like or a subscribe, share this with your friends. I would really appreciate that. 
If you want to learn more about bird photography, consider picking up a copy of my book, Learn the Art of Bird Photography. It's available on Amazon as a Kindle and it's a trade paperback. And then if you really want to learn more about bird photography, consider joining me on a workshop. These are intensive photographic workshops where you'll learn a lot about bird photography, you'll get a lot of practice, and you'll really improve your skill set. Hey, thanks a lot for watching. Really appreciate it. Thank you for everybody who's subscribed. I will see you next week. Have a good one. Bye.